So, hey everyone, um, I'm here today to talk about managing computational chaos. Um, really ominous name. Uh, my name is Raj. I am uh, a co-founder at Novum, as well as a co-founder and CTO at Area Hub. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be talking about managing com computational chaos today with Hasra and State Machines. Um, we're going to be covering today Area Hub. Area Hub is uh, basically a startup we're working on that takes environmental hazards uh, around different areas in the United States and uh, compiles a report to inform individuals and users uh, about the environmental health. Um, and essentially, we'll talk about um, what we do uh, in a nutshell. And basically, you input an address. Um, and then what Area Hub does, it, it essentially looks for um, you know, uh, different categories uh, or different hazards, everything from air pollution, hurricanes, cell towers, uh, water quality for this um, example. And then we generate a nice uh, address report for everyone to uh, check out. Um, and if we wanted to like wrap up this in a process, um, from a very high level, I think uh, this is how it'd go. We, we aggregate data sources. Um, we then run it through essentially a data pipeline where we prepare the data. Um, we then run um, some proprietary ML algorithms as well as um, some business logic and some magic dev sauce, uh, which I'll refer to as intelligence uh, uh, from this point on. And then essentially generate a report. Uh, now I know what you're thinking. Like, where's the chaos in that? And uh, I think when we start diving deeper, uh, that's where we, we begin to see a little bit of chaos. Um, so if we dive in just to the data sources, we aggregate from multiple data sources. Um, and this data can be everything in the, uh, uh, it can be available publicly. It's a mix of public, private, and then proprietary data sets. Um, and if we dive deeper into just the public or uh, the government data sets, um, we notice that we get different file formats. So everything from tabular data sets to uh, geospatial or just based data sets like GeoJSON, shapefiles and such, which is what we're usually looking for, all the way down to archaic forms like Excel and even plain text sometimes. Um, all, not only that, but we have to usually uh, mitigate for missing or fragmented data pieces. We started noticing that there's a lot of missing data post 2017, whether that's political or not, we're not sure, but um, we have obviously had to create uh, a lot of mitigations for that. Um, this data is usually available, uh, uh, you know, rarely it's available uh, via APIs, but mainly it's there for, uh, we do like chronological downloads um, on the data sets, usually they're large data sets. And we've even had cases where we had to, uh, take handwritten uh, information um, from like, like before 1950s and digitize that um, in order to get a good uh, historical set on, um, on, on a specific category. Uh, so all in all, yeah, uh, we have uh, quite a large database now of, uh, of uh, multiple categories and, uh, uh, and essentially um, this kind of comprises uh, everything actually back to the 1800s we have um, uh, data on. But actually this only represents um, a flow for a single hazard and this would be air quality in this case. And so if we're looking at this picture, it actually looks more like this. And if we're looking at this pipeline, it sort of looks more like this where we have every category going through this pipeline and then we have to apply the same um, computation in order to generate this report. But Billy May says, but wait, there's more. Uh, essentially, we have uh, overall categories. And we actually have um, these categories that um, sort of group um, different data, uh, different uh, subcategories. So we group things like air quality and water quality, um, cell towers and high voltage lines. Um, and uh, different natural hazards like hurricanes, tornadoes and such. Um, and we start to see a picture more like this where we have our subcategories, then we're computing our overall categories and then we're generating this report. And that's Area Hub in a nutshell. 
Um, so getting off the ground, you can like, if I had to, you know, talk about our architecture, I would say it comprises of three different aspects, the data pipeline, the access layer, and the presentation. Uh, we're mainly going to be talking about not really so much the data pipeline, I think that's a talk on its own, but um, more the networking between uh, what the results of the data pipeline, and then of course, uh, uh, the networking uh, from the access layer. So if we look at this, um, there's a lot of computation going on. And uh, you know, we have multiple data sources for every subcategory, then we're, we're trying to wrap it all into an overall category and then put it into a report. So if we try to pre-compute this for every single US address every single day, that would cost a lot of money. And as a small startup, that would certainly mean death for us. So um, we came up with a solution to dynamically sort of uh, uh, create this data on request where we would take a latitude and longitude of the area and then compute the results. But that provided, proved to be very difficult. Um, we uh, first uh, tried using a custom Apollo server to run this and how that sort of worked um, was we would uh, go ahead and uh, query um, sort of uh, a report with lat long input and that would go into our resolvers where we had all of our data sort of uh, sitting and that would go ahead and run a bunch of different uh, post just functions uh, in order to cater the results. And so we saw response times of around 42 seconds. Uh, and of course that was ridiculous and horrible. So we needed to improve. Um, that being said, uh, the second iteration of our Apollo server, we decided to go ahead and um, move to AWS Lambda where we would sort of like wrap up all these processes in different lambdas and have the lambdas kind of communicate with one another. Um, and once we did that, the request started looking more like this, where we um, basically had our resolvers that were using the serverless framework and those serverless frameworks would basically go ahead and talk to each uh, serverless instance. Uh, so these would be our subcategories, these would be our overall categories. And what we also did was we actually composed a database for um, each and every one just for the computational layer. Um, and with all those improvements uh, and a lot of dev time, uh, we ended up getting the response down to around 18 seconds. Um, but that's where Hasra came in. And the really appealing thing about Hasra was uh, number one subscriptions out of the box, which, um, you know, having a dev team composed of basically one person, um, you know, implementing subscriptions was not really something that, uh, uh, you know, we wanted to spend time on. And so having that out of the box was really nice. Another thing was PostGIS. Hostra has wonderful support for PostGIS. Um, at Novum, we tend to prefer ORMs. Uh, for building any sort of like um, API or GraphQL layer. Um, and uh, what we noticed very quickly was post just support was either uh, limited or not there. And so when we saw Hasra, it, it, it was right out of the box and uh, that was very helpful. Um, computed fields. So if we're, if we're taking a bunch of nearby hazards and we're creating scores based off of the number of results we get, um, computed fields really help um, in that sense where we can actually, um, you know, compute the results on the fly based off the query. Um, so that was another add. And of course, it was fast. It was blazing fast. Um, and so um, we introduced another component to this, which was AWS step functions. And the best way I can describe AWS functions, step functions in a nutshell is um, think of it as putting your business logic uh, or business workflow into a state machine, right? Where we are basically, um, you know, categorizing these different workflows and we, you know, we can make decisions based off of the data, the incoming data, and they will go through these uh, Lambda functions based off of set data. Um, so this, this lamb these Lambdas that we wrapped, we actually um, converted them into state machines or step functions. Uh, so basically we have our main report trigger or a report um, workflow that connects to um, our overall workflows and that connects to all these Lambda instances. We're able actually to reuse a lot of our AWS Lambda instances. Um, and if we had to kind of look at it from a workflow perspective, like this is, this is basically our report trigger where, um, you know, we check if the report exists. It's really hard to see. I'm sorry about that. 
AWS UI. <laughs> um, and we basically make a determination there whether or not if the report exists, then we go ahead and um, give it a success date and return the results. And then basically, uh, if it doesn't exist, we run basically, we trigger our other state machines that then uh, run parallel and um, are able to output our results. So Hostra with step functions, if we were to kind of put that into perspective, this is sort of how it works. We first throw a mutation right on our search page and that in effect triggers an action. And also on the next client route, we actually um, go ahead and start listening to the subscription. And uh, that, that action basically sends a, a result to an API gateway that triggers our uh, state machine which triggers multiple categories. And how we have this uh, category sort of update uh, Hasra is through, through several mutations that occur within those state machines. And once those uh, results update, we're able to compose a report. So uh, basically like uh, in order to see, and it, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay, awesome. So um, to kind of see this in real time, uh, I'm going to go ahead and input um, an address here. And then we go ahead and run the report and you can see what our response times look like. Um, and over here we have basically our overall categories that all are uh, resolved and we get our complete report. Uh, and then we can kind of look into each and every um, single hazard uh, where we can see nuclear plants that are nearby. Uh, so there's three near, nearby this uh, particular address. Um, we can see things like uh, radon. Hey Raj, uh, sorry for interrupting, ahead. but if you're, in case you're presenting another screen, we cannot see it. We can just see okay. the slide with demo time. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. All right. All right, so that, that makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna do this again. Um, so I'm going to run basically an address here on um, the site. And you can see our response times are very quick. Um, basically we get a report immediately through all of those computational processes. Uh, we can see different super funds or different hazards. Um, over here, we can see nuclear plants in this particular address. There's three. So we can kind of scroll through this. And we actually have metadata information on uh, said uh, nuclear um, uh, reactors. We also um, look for information like uh, radon, uh, air pollution, as well as uh, water quality. So we get water quality information on uh, violations and such. Um, and this is all happening uh, via our state machines. So if I were actually to take you into our, our, uh, uh, our step functions, um, basically we can see, uh, since I ran this report right now uh, on uh, the other screen. Hey, I'm so sorry to interrupt you again. Um, can you make sure that you're sharing this screen, um, the other screen that you're referring to right now? Oh, you guys can't see it still? No, we can only see your slides. Let me see. Can you guys see it now? Yes. Sweet. Okay. Do this one more time. All right. 304. <laughs> so we're going to run a report again. And you can see that we have a really quick. Um, uh, response time here, where we're getting basically, again, our report uh, grade, and then we're getting our subcategory reports. Um, and if we go dive in deeper, again, we can see multiple hazards here. We can kind of scroll through it. We get sort of this map overview of different, like, uh, you know, everything from nuclear plants uh, to radon, where we can kind of, you know, view sort of like holistically what other counties in our area look like, uh, air pollution as well and even water quality where we're actually taking health violations and uh, uh, different water systems into account. Uh, if we were to go into our step functions result, um, you can basically see, I think I ran it like three times. So I'm gonna try to find, there we go. 
So you can basically see um, the workflow that it went through. Um, so it basically triggered the, the address actually didn't exist. So it goes ahead and um, runs this uh, each and every subcategory that triggers the other state machines. Uh, they run in parallel and give us a success, success state. Um, you can think of all these little blocks as lambdas. So if we were actually to, to click into here, we can actually go into that, that lambda view. Um, and so uh, basically that's, uh, that's kind of step functions in a nutshell. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share this again. And yeah, and that our average response times usually with Hasura and step functions went down from 42 seconds to 18 to now uh, around 500 uh, microseconds. Um, so a huge improvement. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, to all of you guys, happy holidays and uh, happy new year.